Hello and welcome to the Shifty Crab podcast. Do not adjust your TV sets because today I am your host, Terry Jeffs, and joining me is a normal regular host, the debater, dominator, the campaign arena, Mr. Adam Vary. How are you, Adam? This is weird. This You're is, on the uh, other side. You're on the other side of the, of the table. I know, yeah. I can relax a little bit, you know, just sit here, just derail everything that you say. Yeah, like, yeah that's good. That's as I do. Perfect. As I do. How are you? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. Just just the two of us again, just the two of us part two um, yeah. this week. No, no Vince. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, this time of the week again. It's uh, the Shifty Crab podcast uh, where we just talk a whole manner of... Uh, just weird and yeah just complete trash fire really so um and it's my favorite time of the week why not you know so uh but no how, how have you been how, how's your week been you know what? my week's been good like it's been chugging along um it feels like it's later than tuesday like it does like this like i feel like the weekend just wasn't a weekend this week like, i had some crazy things happened to me that I want to get into on the on the podcast as well Ooh, obviously the big news from the whole thing is which I'm sure you're ecstatic about is Sonic Central. So I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to bring that up at some point. Oh man, I I've, got, my I've eyes got some when I saw stuff. That. I've got some stuff. I'm like, I know we've got news break on Thursday, but there's some stuff I can't I can't bottle up until then. I've got to talk about some things. Uh can, you need to vent some of it now so yeah. the news isn't just an hour of Sonic. Exactly. And especially yeah. something that I just I didn't even want to mention this pre-show. Because I wanted yeah. to get your reaction because I wasn't sure oh, if you've okay. even seen it. I think like some breaking news that I've just seen on Twitter know. that's got me really excited. But yeah, I'll get oh, to that. Oh, well, I haven't I'll get... looked at Twitter in the last no, couple exactly. of hours. Yeah. So. yeah, well, yeah, well, you won't know this then. This is good oh, stuff. Exciting. But um, uh, but no, you, you said um, you, you had, a, had a good week though. First of all, yeah, let's get to, before we get to any other stuff, have you, have you been playing anything at all or watching anything? Yeah, yeah. I've been religiously based, playing Mass Effect. Nice. Like, nice. Mass Effect One, done. Mass Effect Two, wow, really done. What are you like, kidding me? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just. How at the very long beginning of Mass Effect does it 3. take to get through the campaign of Mass Effect, Mass Effect One and Two? One is, I'd say, about fifteen hours. Oh, I, I yeah. just assumed they were longer than that because they're like RPGs. Yeah, they get longer. Like you got to bear in mind that when One came out. I don't think they had much trust in the franchise. Right. So it was it was a bit stripped back compared to what they added. So for, I think, it, and it seems like a lifetime ago that I played it, but it was about a week ago. Um, I think you have six companions in Mass Effect 1, that you, and you can have a, a party of three mm. that come out with your missions. You can mix and match, and you've got to build kind of like, well, to be honest, you don't really build any sort of relationships with them in the first one. Um in the second one, you can have 12, and they all have missions of their own as well. And you've got to kind of build their loyalty, and that loyalty unlocks stuff and helps with certain things within the game. Uh, plus, you have a much more in-depth cities to explore. There's a lot more people in there that you can do missions for and side mm. quests and stuff like that. Two... Um, I think my runtime on two is 30 hours. Um, okay. And I've not done everything. I've completed that the main quest. I've got 84% of the trophies. And the last, there's a few combat ones, and I've got a few, because one of the trophies is you've got to scan every planet and stuff like that, which mm. doesn't really take long. Like, it's much better than it was on the first. Um, and I've just started for three, and I can't remember how long three is. I think it's, I think three might be more streamlined, but I could be wrong. That is, three was kind of like a blur when it came out because I did it wrong and I just rushed the third one. Mm. So I think I was going on holiday or something, and I just wanted to finish it beforehand. So I'm looking forward this time, and um, obviously because your your character from especially with the because uh, it's all on, on one thing, your character yeah. stays with you throughout all three. Yeah. So the decisions you make in the first one still show up in the third one. And yeah. you carry over a lot of your abilities and your skills and your relationships and stuff like that um, all the way through. 
do I think playing it this way is a really good way because obviously there was years between the games when they first came out. Yeah. Um, that was one of yeah. the reasons, uh, sorry, yeah. like, that was one of the reasons why I um, never played through the trilogy like when, as they came out because I bought the first one on 360 when it came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then by the time Mass Effect 2 came out, my 360 was basically like gathering dust. Yeah. And you couldn't get Mass Effect 1 on the PS3, if I, if I remember oh, correctly. Correct, yeah. So when Mass Effect 2 came out, it gave you that option to do the kind of like, kind of quick, mini. Yeah. Yeah, like a quick, which I was like, mm, I don't like, you know, as the no. kind of player, I'm like a completionist. So I have to do it mm. properly. I have to do the whole game. And I had Mass Effect 2 on the PC. Um, but again, like, I, 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 I think I just grabbed it when it came out. Maybe it was in a Steam sale, like not long after it came out. And um, I bought it, but I didn't play. I, I thought I'd just try it out, but I didn't want to carry on playing through it because I wanted to do to do one again. Yeah. I and mean, if I couldn't obviously get my three, uh, 360 one to connect. And then three came out and then that was on the PS. It was just, it was just all over the place. And so, yeah, as you say, like now that you've got this full trilogy out, perfect. Mm-hmm. You just do yeah. it all in one thing. And what's good with it is integrated into the PS5, so it tracks your trophies and stuff like that. It's good. Right. So it has all that in there. Um, there is a very big jump between one and two in terms of the UI and yeah. the controls and stuff like that. They do change it. And then there's another another big jump to three. So and none of these are spoilers in the slightest. It's just the style of play. Everyone knows the combat was changed from one to two. Oh yeah. I mean uh, I just what I yeah. played drastic, yeah. Oh, the combat's terrible in the first. Yeah, the combat it's, it's feels much great. better in the second. Yeah, um, and they re- they upgrade the your powers and abilities that you can have through your Omni tool and stuff like that. Your biotics, um, and they feel much better. Uh, but then when you go to the third, the app you can customize your weapons more. You can add modifiers to them and attachments, and you've got a weight management as well, like. The heavier guns you put on your back, the slower your shields will recharge and stuff like that. So mm. you could basically just use whatever weapons you wanted in, in in the other games. And then now it's you've got to think about it. Like, do I wear armor that's lighter but gives me less protection? But then I can have bigger guns. And there's a bit more RPG elements that they brought in in the third one. For example, in the first one, there's no ammo. You can just shoot. Like, and then mm. obviously there's a cooldown. Like, yeah, yeah, so when yeah, they yeah. bring when they bring ammo in in the second game, it's alien at first. You're like, what? Whoa, 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 wait, wait! I've got I've got limited ammo. Like I mm. have to, but obviously they give they throw ammo at you quite often anyway. Um, and then in the third one, they they added that your Omni tool is basically can be used as a weapon, like a sword almost. So they give you a bit more of a melee side, and they give you more lateral movement because you can't jump until the third one. Like and and then the third one, you can only jump when prompted over a gap. There's no jumping up and down or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. but they give you ladders and stuff like that in the third one. So they all they were always building out, and you can see the te- technological advancements throughout each. And because I played them in quite a condensed space of time, um, you notice them a lot, and it's impressive how the the actual game improves over each of them. So, yeah, so I, I think when it comes down in price, I think it's something that you should definitely have a go oh, at. Oh, 100%. Yeah, be playing through this trilogy uh, at some point. Um, is Without obviously going into any spoilers, oh, yeah. is the ending as disappointing as everyone makes it out? Um, did they fix it in the end? I don't know exactly. I can't remember. I think they fixed it. But mm-hmm. I'm not, obviously, I'm not there. I've only just yeah. started the third one, so I can't remember. I remember when I played through it, the ending didn't disappoint me as much as it seemed to disappoint okay. everybody else. But I understand yeah. their argument to it. Mm. Um, but I believe that they fixed parts of it. Or... So I know, I know one of the criticisms was like, you know, th- there was such a branching storyline throughout the mm. whole trilogy and then by the time we got to the ending, it was literally just A, B, or C ending, that kind of thing. Is that right? Basically, you know, yeah. That was how that was the issue with it. But the I think the third game kind of did a good job of bringing it all kind of back in because mm. realistically, 
they say it's a branching game, but you end each game pretty much exactly the same. Yeah. Like, yeah. like there's there's one ending with yeah. a few tweaks in each of them. Like, and they have effects into the next game, but they're still the same ending. So the third one's exactly the same. Like, it's got multiple twists and turns, and you can do the game how you want to do it. Mm. Like, they have the uh, the Paragon and the Renegade. So you can be good or bad, really. Um, and you can choose, like, in the second game, it is vitally important how you play that game to what happens in the final mission. Mm. And it's a very famous thing, the suicide mission in Mass Effect 2. Like, it takes a lot of preparation. And, like, if you get if you get bits wrong, you're going to have a very different last mission to other people. Mm. So, and the third one has those elements as well, but the second game is the standout for those sort of where your choices really matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the ending's still the same. Like, so, yeah, I'd, I wasn't too bothered by it. Mm. I think that's the fun in any second part of any trilogy, yeah. isn't it? It's just that you can... Yeah. You can have a bit of fun, like because you like yeah. it's the you don't even got to worry about wrapping it up or like that's no, the yeah. that's the next yeah. game's problem, and that's why so many people I think are disappointed in in many like um, whether it be games or films. It's the th- like if you're wrapping up a story, there's always going to be disappointed people, yeah, because you got to have definitive definitive ends to some of those uh, questions the or answers. Third it, album, yes, yeah, it yeah the difficult third album, yeah, right. yeah, I like it, I like it. What about oh, cool. you? What have you been playing? Um, I've not been playing. Uh, all I've played is Horizon, and I've not played much of it this week because I've had such a busy week. I've not really had much gaming time. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly chipping away again uh, this week. I haven't done any more of the story. Just been again, just carrying on yeah, um, side doing. Quest up. Yeah, doing a side quest. I did a, another cauldron. Um, I literally, I've been. I wasn't even going to do this, but I'm like just working my way around the map getting like if i see a metal flower if i see yeah. a collectible uh, what they call the little statues i'm literally climbing peaks and everything. i'm literally just clearing this map up um and wow. yeah and and doing the um tutorials and and the hunts i've still got some hunts to do um, they get quite difficult i think the hunts like they, yeah, they yeah yeah to get to to get the maximum yeah uh, uh you know like whatever they're called like the marks and stuff but yeah. um no yeah still still really enjoying it um i'm like level like 31 32 or something like that now okay, um so pretty yeah high level yeah pretty high up like so like my i'm way higher now than my story level like uh, story like the campaign quest is but yeah. But I've got other side missions and, uh, in, that are even higher than that. But I'm just trying to kind of get through those, and I'll, I'll probably just kind of blitz through uh, the last. I think I've got about five missions, story missions to do. Mm. So I know I'm right near the end. So I'm keen to to get that kind of polished off, just to see what that story has kind of uh, left for me to unfold. But no, I'm just really enjoying it. I'm at the point now where I just actually I'm not don't want to rush it. Like um, I'm just uh, just enjoying that world still. It's lovely, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I haven't played played anything else really. Um, Have you dipped into Forbidden West yet? Uh, not Forbidden West, uh, Frozen. Wild. No, so Frozen Wilds. I'm going to leave that. I want to. I want to finish, like roll credits on on this yeah. campaign, and then and then go to maybe I'll take a break from it. I don't know, and then go back to Frozen Wilds. You know, as Frozen most Wilds people... is a pretty decent length as well. It's a it's beefy. yeah. That's that's yeah, pretty pretty big i didn't realize how i was looking it's like um about half the length of the actual whole of horizon mm-hmm. maybe even more than that i don't know um but no I'm, I'm looking forward to that but yeah i might take a i might finish the the campaign take a break then go back to do the frozen mold and then maybe try and just 100 percent the whole thing because that's what i like about it. it's not like a separate thing is it it's like yeah no it's just oh, there yeah it's just there it's there it's in the map you can kind of tackle it from any point from from level 30 so i could do it yeah i could start it right now but no i'll wait and um and do that probably the right anyway. thing to do yeah and i know that soon we've got e3 coming up and there's going to be like all uh like you said forbidden forbidden west like stuff coming up and it's going to get me so pumped that's that's what will probably happen i'll see that and I'm like right i'm going back into the frozen wild i'm going to go into the frozen wilds and and just get everything done 
Well, you've got Thursday, haven't you? You said this Thursday is the state of play. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, oh. a bit of West state of play, which is an interesting one because there's that, obviously, does that mean they're not going to do something over the summer? Or do you think at the end of this, they're going to announce their date for the summer? This is the summer? thing. I just don't know what, what PlayStation are doing, like in regards mm. to like E3 or everything. Are they going to have like this one kind of state of play which would have been at E3 like sometime after or before or they're just gonna just chuck little things in like a horizon one here and and something else over there and like throughout the year maybe it'd be interesting to see this one I'd anyway, rather cause... have like I know it's just mm. just I want them at E3 man just be there yeah like just get balls it in to June. the wall just chuck it all in one yeah. state of play let's have a yeah. big banging like thing everyone but, show their cards um the one thing, obviously, we're going to be talking about on this on uh, on Newsbreak, but oh man, it's it's definitely a uh, a Terry news news uh, couple of weeks so far. Jesus, the Final Fantasy, uh, Final yeah. Fantasy Origin news. Wow. Okay, I that straight away. I am like for um, E3, the Square Enix show is my. That's what I'm pumped for. I am pumped for really? this, and I hope I'm not disappointed. Like and. I don't want to get myself too hyped up because I've heard someone say that, yeah, this is rumored to be in development. Doesn't mean that it's going to be anything's going to be announced about this on, uh, mm-hmm. on this show, but mm, interesting stuff. Yeah. I saw this. It's an interesting one for it to leak now, very close to E3. You'd think that it's probably real. You would hope so. Right. And yeah, the source sounds good. It's reliable. Yeah. And, uh, I've yeah. heard it's just the one that they say is kind of like a Souls game. So yeah, this is, is yeah. Um, it's apparently it's a PlayStation exclusive being developed by Team Ninja, who did uh, Neo and Neo yeah. Two, and what was it? Oh, the the Ninja Gaiden games. Um, and yeah, so it will be similar to the to the like Neo kind of combat, but they, I think I heard like a little bit more approachable because Neo is supposedly hard. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like a Souls like, but set in the Final Fantasy One world, which is weird because I'm playing through Final Fantasy One right now. I know, yeah. So like, yeah, so like, really like, and yeah, and, and it's called it's called Final Fantasy Origin, not to be confused with Origins, which was mm. on the PlayStation One, which was Final Fantasy One and Two. Square um, Enix, man. Yeah, I know, I know the names, Jesus. But yeah, oh, that sounds weird. I mean, because if yeah. if any of that series were to be adapted into it, I, I could see them doing like a game like that. I mean, Jesus, they're making a Final Fantasy VII Battle Royale, but um, Final Fantasy One, like, like there's not. I, I get, yeah, I guess you got room to play. But there's not like I was saying before. There's not much of a story there. It's just very much like, oh, like Loose. here's the villain. Yeah, like get the crystal, save the world, kind of thing. But to make a They've got a uh, lot going on at the moment. If this is they true. have got a lot going, yeah. They, there's look, it's great as a gamer to see Final Fantasy really putting its mark back down and saying we're still a yeah. juggernaut. You know, like we've still got a lot going on. But then you worry that they're spreading themselves a little bit too thin. Yeah, because there's hope, a hope, lot going on. I need to find out what. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean. You know, at the end of the day, this is a different development team. So fine. I mean, if you're going to put out that, I've not seen them do this before. Unless I'm like I'm wrong. There's probably been some weird kind of spin-off games, mm. but I've not seen them just go hit give their license to a good, you know, an established good developer and say, yeah, "Here you go, make their thing." But Square have been known to spread themselves um, too thin, and it's not worked. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, it'd be interesting to see. You don't have too long to wait. No, right. but out. I tell you what, I did just find out. So do, 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 do. this is um, Shifty oh. Crab news break within the Shifty Crab podcast. Yeah, um, I changed I the overlay. Do you need the overlay changing? For this? <laughs> yeah. So JJ Abrams' long rumored adaption of Valve's hit game is in active development at Warner Brothers with a script in the works. Portal movie. No. Yes. That, that's this, is cool. like, this is on IGN by Tom Jorgensen. Yeah, the cake may be a liar, but here's the truth. J.J. Abrams' long-rumored adaption of Valve's hit game Portal is in active development at Warner Brothers. Um, 
this is during his like, press release when he done like the Super 8 uh, 4K oh, yeah. Blu-ray. Um, yeah, it says here, we actually do have, this is JJ Abrams, we actually do have a script that's being written for the Portal movie now at Warner Brothers. We're really excited about the take and the pitch. So it feels like that thing's finally on the rails. Abrams' suggestion towards Portal's long development maybe remind you that it's been eight years. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Like it was yesterday. Did, yeah. uh, d- did you watch that with him and Gabe Noor when they done that TED TED talks together? Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that was I, just I like watching. that was good stuff to watch. That was just like two great minds coming together. Um, so especially like I am such a yeah. huge Lost fan. Like, yeah. and at the time, I remember when they had that talk. Like, Lost was was it finished that point? Yeah, it would have finished that point, I think. But they were talking about how they like loved each other's stuff and and they showed that there was like there's references of of half life in in lost and then there's also mm. references of lost in uh, half life um so cool but yeah and, and i know that they were talking about yeah they want to work together and and actually make a film or or make a game together or something like that oh it's funny happening adam so many questions like all of the lens flare uh <laughs> yes so much lens well, they, flare in aperture those, I know, oh, aperture. just i know that's clever like okay I like that, yeah yeah uh i uh like will they follow the story of the first one because that i don't know if that makes a movie because that is just you going from room to room while a ro- while a robot talks to you i think is this much yeah, water uh, portal? Like, is no, engaged? this is the thing, and no, this is like it's like when it's like Half Life, and and this yeah. is what I love about Half Life. It's like the law is there if you want to go looking for it. You know, it's a bit like the the yeah. Souls games, like, yeah. but although Souls games provide more like through their story, whereas the Half Life games really don't. It's more stuff like either fan made or stuff like that, and yeah. people just kind of speculating. But that's why I think so is, so is cool, like what is so cool about those games. It just kind of gives you, puts you in the feet of that character and you're just in this thing and you don't know, you're as confused, like in, in Half-Life, you're as confused as Gordon Freeman is, you know? Mm-hmm. He's thinking what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. there's like a rift to another, and you know, and the same thing for Half-Life 2. Like you're in City 17 and you're like, okay, so what's happening here? Has the world been taken over by aliens? I guess so. Like you used to see little clues and stuff. Yeah, and it's the same for Portal. Like, we only see inside of Aperture Laboratories. We don't, we get a hint at the end, don't we, of like what, yeah. like everything seems derelict and stuff like that. I want a film like that. I want a film where. Is we... it filming in first person? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I, I hope not. Um, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I can see it being the same kind of thing. Like, um, it would definitely help with the budget to be keep it contained and be like, right. So you're just, you know, this, whether it's, uh, is it shell shell or whatever the character is in the, in the first yeah. portal, but like whether you, it just is his character and they're trying to figure out what's going on. I can, yeah, I can see that happening. I can even almost kind of hear the trailer, like glad I was talking to you and you're, and you're like, for people that don't know portal, you're like, yeah. is this person, you know, are they good? Are they on your side? Like, what's going on here? Something's not quite right. And, you know, finding the cracks in the in the walls, like, what's going on? You know, like, this is... It would be difficult to make that into a film, though, to run for, let's say, it's the Abrams film, so probably about 120 minutes. Like, it, I, mean, I don't know. With You've Abrams, what? that's what makes him tick, though. He loves, yeah. he loves the whole... The uh, visuals like, would be great. Yeah, like he loves the whole like what's in the box kind of thing. He loves to tease mm. a, a secret and then you've got to the whole thing will be about unraveling that, you know. So um they would have to because yeah, they're gonna definitely have to add stuff that isn't canon to make it work. Because I you've got um, unless the whole film is gonna be a character that will talk obviously in the film and GLaDOS. Like and they're the only two people talking in the whole film. Well I no, think, think about think about the turrets think about how much oh, they I can like, really like make characters yeah. out of those think about oh, yeah. um what's the two i don't i don't have to put them in it but the two robots from portal 2 oh yeah i know you could bring wheatley in as well i guess wheatley but, like yeah. you could really um make some characters out of them and glados alone i mean 
Oh my god, they have to bring back the actress though who played Gladys. Ellen McLean. Yeah. If they don't, that's a mistake. That's I'm a mistake. Just checking to see, and I don't mean this disrespectfully. I'm just checking she's still alive. Who is it that told me? Was it you, or did someone else tell me that Glados? Um, someone like laid a fact down that she's the voice of something else. I was like, what? Like she it was. Um... Yeah. Let me see. She's done a lot of things. She was in. She's done. She was in Half Life Two. She was the Combine Overwatch in Half Life Two, and the administrator and the announcer in Team Fortress. Um, oh wow! I did not. Yeah, now you've said that. Yeah. She's an opera singer as well, apparently. Uh, she was in Batman Dimensions. But she actually plays like uh, something similar, like an AI so in, a, in a film. And oh, she's like, the oh, AI oh, oh, in oh, no, Pacific you say, Rim. Yeah, Pacific Rim. I was going to say, because yeah, like, I remember awesome. seeing it at cinema, I was like, oh my God, there's GLaDOS. Like when, yeah, when they're getting in the suits. Oh, she was in... Uh... Oh, yeah, she was in... Oh, I was just about to say, oh, she was in Cyberpunk. But yeah, of course she was in Cyberpunk because of the... Um... Mm. She was but also yeah. in Half Life Alex. Ah. She's basically been in all of the Valve games, I think. Yeah, she probably does the she voice now thinking about the, on the suits when it says like low, like low energy, like you know, recharge. Same, she's been in Dota as well. Mm. Left the Dead 2 as well. She was what, the witch in Left 4 Dead 2. Oh my god. Ugh. Yeah. Just the thought of that, that noise. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so crying. You, you I don't think you crying. could have. Oh, that crying was awful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't think you could do Glados without her voice. Really. Mm. Yeah. But no, exciting stuff. I'm sure we'll, exciting. We'll, we'll talk about this in much more detail on uh, on Newsbreak. I'm sure. But last thing I will ask about it: Do you think it would be live action, or do you think it would be animated? No, live action, definitely. You think Abrams? You think they'll do it live action? I think so. I think so. I, it, it, so. I, I can see it as a, as a film. I could see it as a Netflix project. You know, I yeah. know oh it's Warner Brothers, though, isn't it? So it would be it'd be HBO Max, wouldn't it? So yeah. I could see it as being. Um, it. But it, that it's one of those films that I think could take off quite well if it was like went on to streaming. But who knows? You know, it got, I'm really speculating, but I, I imagine it's something like quite. I think of it as something similar to like Ten Cloverfield Lane. You know. But, yeah, 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 yeah. But with more of a. See a little bit more of a, a portal gun, yeah, a bit more portals. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But the no, posters but... will be cool for that film, though. Ah, the marketing could be so cool. It's just so much potential for that franchise. For people that that don't play games, I don't know. It's just such a cool idea. Oh, yeah. oh man, good stuff. Well, I hope it. I hope it comes to uh, comes to light. So. Have you been going on to to film? Have you been watching any films or TV stuff? We just started, well, I wanted to start watching How to Get Away with Murder. Okay. Because um, I think with Viola Davis, uh, which is six seasons, I think. It's, it was on years ago, I think. Like, But yeah. I had missed it. And I thought, you know what? I've heard really good things. I kind of want to watch something a little bit like that. We watched the first episode. I really enjoyed it. Casey did not. So, but now she won't let me watch the rest of them, even though I'm like, but you're not going to watch the rest of them. So just let me watch the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So really, really, uh, no, I haven't really sat down and watched anything. I don't think. So uh, I've yeah. just started, um, and I've been wanting to watch this for ages and I finally just made myself, and now I'm just hooked. Mind Hunter. Oh yeah. My Netflix. Be incredible. Yeah. It is so good it's um yeah david fincher which you know I, as we mentioned when really we speak about yeah. films I, I love all of his stuff um he's got that typical fincher dark kind of gritty tone to it and yeah it's so it's so good it's i mean it's disturbing it's pretty oh yeah, yeah. pretty hardcore viewing but it's like yeah it's interesting because it's all like based um on like true stories of like and it's so weird to like think about now but it's like yeah, it's in. I don't know what year it is, but somewhere in like the mid seventies or early seventies, and it's like um, before that. There's even the term serial, serial killer. killer. Yeah, and it's like the FBI, and and it's the I forget the main guy's name in it, but he's like very well educated and like did like psychology like during a time when that wasn't kind of common at all, and he yeah he wants to understand more about you know what 
made what what are these people makes these people tick or like what is it that's doing to them whereas at that point if i just they don't even care that they're, like, they're, they're like built off of the people that just wanted to stop people get like tax evasion and stuff and yeah. <laughs> organized crime they're like they don't want to care but they don't care about psychology or any of that crap but it's really interesting yeah like them but yeah it's like some of the stuff's like really like graphic and stuff and but it's really interesting it's really it's really cool but yeah i'm i'm, I'm four episodes in on that there's two seasons um i think it did get there was like talks of it being cancelled but then so i read something the other day that um david fincher said it's that they're going continuing in. yeah yeah season three so i thought i'm gonna jump on and yeah i'm not disappointed really good highly recommend that yeah i want to watch that one as well it's on the list that list is getting longer though yeah, yes, yeah. these goddamn lists, these goddamn backlogs, oh, yeah. pile of shames, and Hello. um, yeah. So last, not last week, week before, when it was just the two of us, part one, you decided to give me a little interview, Adam. So I thought this week I could um turn the tables and uh, yeah, do the same for yourself. Oh, okay. So I thought I'd just, um, you know, give the, right. the, the Shifty Crab viewers, listeners, just a little bit more information and back a bit of a background story. Gather around, children. Gather around for the origins. Of, the origin uh, of, story. Uh, origin story. The origin story of Adam Vary. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought well, we can parents kind were of... murdered in an alley. Oh, uh... God, okay. Let's just stop now. Then. Um, yeah, so I know we mentioned this... Uh, previously, I think when we were talking game and history and stuff like that, but you go, we'll go a little bit further into it. So, yeah, first thing I wanted to say is um, gaming. So, like your first first actual memory of playing a game, like, and what was that? So I cannot remember the name of the game. Like Alex the Kid is obviously the one that was prominent, but I yeah. played an Atari before that. And it was brought out of the attic and it was just a motocross game. It was just blips going across the screen and it jumped. Yeah. And I, yeah. And I remember playing that and that was my first ever experience of playing a console and being fascinated by it. Like mm. not understanding how it really worked. I was young, really young. I'm amazed I can even remember it. I must have been maybe about three or four, like maybe three. And I remember just pressing the buttons and not knowing what I was doing. And then there's like nothing really. And then, yeah, it was Alex the Kid. So that probably would have been the um, the Atari 2600 with a wood finish one and the joystick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The classic. uh, It was... um, and a funny story about it, it didn't belong to any of my family. It was when my grandma moved into the house, it was in a wardrobe that was just left there. There really? was an Atari and a bunch of like records. And one of the records, um, which is really weird, was Barry Manilow. Like, I'm, going, I'm going on a tangent here. Um, <laughs> I can't remember which song it was by Barry Manilow, but it was my grandma and my granddad's wedding song. Right, it, okay. it, it wasn't the album. It was just the L. It was just the EP. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. That yeah. song. There was like four albums in there. One of them was this song, and it wasn't one of his popular ones. It wasn't like Mandy or any of these. These ones. that'd be a weird song to have at your wedding, Mandy. Like, <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, and it was just weird. There was an Atari and these four albums or uh, vinyls. Yeah, and that was my first experience of even knowing what a computer was. Like, and I was just like, my, "That was it." My mind was blown. And and then once I got that master system, it was game over. I think so. It's funny you said that because um, yeah, we had a an Atari twenty six hundred, and that was in the wardrobe in the spare bedroom. And I think it was like, I don't know if it was like one of my sisters or something like that, but it was, it was there, and I I. I remember playing it like we used to like get it out every now and again and 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 dust it down and but that would have been like after I'd been playing them on Mega Drive or something like that so it wasn't like yeah. my first like I don't remember playing one before that 
But I remember every now and again we would like dust it off, and it did seem like a bit of a novelty because it see like even then obviously it seemed old. It seemed like, and yeah. um, I remember playing. I can't remember if it was like the Olympics or one of those games, like a Winter Games, something mm. like that, where you could play different sports. Yeah. One of them was skiing. I remember you had to go yeah. down the, the flag poles and stuff. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, I remember it. Like, and I remember it taking an absolute age to turn on. <laughs> like, and. I remember going a little bit forward when I got the master's to mostly Alex the kid, but I also remember, um, well, Asterix and Obelix. Like, it was, uh, I was fascinated by it. Mm. Like, I, I, if you don't know it, it's a cartoon. Oh, I know it, yeah. The, yeah. The, the Vikings. About the Gauls and they were the Vikings and the Romans. But they had a game on the master system as well. I think they had a few, but I had one of them and I was obsessed with it. And uh, Road Rash. So like, I think that was the Master System. I'm, uh, yeah, that was the was that the Master System or was that the Mega Drive? It was on the Mega Drive. I don't know if there, there might have been a Master System version, but the Mega Drive was the only version that I... They I, kind I, of blur because I got them quite similar times. Yeah. Um, and Road Rash was my jam with those ridiculous, like the cutscenes where it was just the image and it would just be at the bar. And then next thing you know, you're on a bike with a I mace. I can hear the music in around. my head. Like, ding, it's, ding, 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 ding. it's like proper, oh, like, I love oh, it. it. Like, whipping the chains. Yeah. And just punching and kicking. Like, I, I loved that game. Absolutely loved it. And I, I remember my aunt and my uncle had a Sega Saturn. Um, and that was my first experience of a CD-ROM style disc uh console and it was tomb raider so i remember that was the first time i'd seen a proper 3d like game and i was just like my mind was blown and that was yeah. it i was like this is what i want to do is just play this so was that was that the so like obviously just going back before the saturn yeah did you you, you know you had a master system mm-hmm. and then did you say you had, you had a mega drive or did you say you skipped to no, I had a Master System and a, I had a Sega Master System 2 and a Mega Drive 2. Yeah. The, red, the Mega Drive that had the red bits on it, not the white bits on okay. it. Okay. I think that was the second one. Yeah. Um, or maybe it wasn't. But yeah, I had, which had obviously had like Sonic 3 and stuff like that on it, I yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, Mega Drive 2, yeah. And, yeah, so, and was that um, like something that the Mega Drive, was that something that you consciously like, wanted or you'd asked for? Or was it just something that, that that's what you got bought and trying to think my best friend at the time had one Mm. and i think it was one of them that i would play a lot when i was there so i think my family just thought well we'll buy him one of them and that was my first experience of that christmas day like you know ripping open the paper and how there was a Hmm, mega drive there going oh my god it's a mega (laughs) drive i can play all the greatest games look at this it's like real world yeah like on a mega drive like it's uh ridiculous when you look at it but at the time oh yeah it's, it's, it know, like, we sound it's so we sound so old. Yeah. I know what you mean. I would loved it. I had like the Formula One game, which was the worst Formula One game ever. Like, but to me, it was the best racing game ever. And I remember just I would get told off all the time because that's all I wanted to do. Like, and I was a really sporty kid, but my life would be outside playing sport ignore everyone in the house just go upstairs and play my mega drive mm, mm. like and I, I loved it that and, um yeah that what you, you're saying that that experience that 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 experience the first like holy shit next gen experience that yeah. for me was um when i saw it was my my sister's boyfriend at the time bought r- brought round his super nintendo yeah. so at the time i don't think i at that point i must not have had a home console um and he brought it around and it had a uh, mortal Kombat on it the first mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah and i remember him like kind of plugging it in and, and on our lounge tv and stuff and it, it, back then i remember it just taking such a long time to kind of get it on shit to tune the channel in and stuff like that yeah, yeah and i remember when it came up and i was just like holy shit because like that was the first time we'd seen kind of like digitized characters you know what i mean everything was kind of like yeah. pixels and stuff before and it's like yeah that's a real to person. me yeah my yeah. brain they look they they look real. There was these yeah. like characters going like this on the screen. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Like not even mentioning like the violence and stuff. Like that. I was just like, oh. this is incredible. Like this is, yeah. like, I've never, like, 
Um, and I was obviously really young at that point, but like, I just couldn't believe Probably a little bit too young, for too young, Mortal definitely Kombat. for Mortal Kombat. Yeah. But I, I turned, I was a, for some reason, yeah. by the time Mortal Kombat 2 come out, I was just so yeah. hyped for it. I wanted to get that on the Mega Drive and I got it. And just, that was like one of my all time favorite games. But um, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Because that's the first, like your first yeah, I realized memory of like, you're thinking, wow, of... that's, yeah, that's what it could be. So yeah, it was incredible. So jumping forward to getting the Saturn. Yeah. Um, I surely that must have been something that, that you were moment. waiting for. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I because kind of a similar story to the Mega Drive. I used to go to my aunt and uncle's quite a lot, and my uncle had this egg sad, and I would just play it. I because I, I was always a terrible sleeper as a child, so I'd wake up really early, and I'd go to bed really late, and I'm. St- to this day i'm the same yeah like um, i maybe sleep for about four hours so i uh would wake up before everybody and i'd just go downstairs into the living room at my, and just turn the volume all the way down and i would just be playing the same sound like whether it was like football or but it would be like there was a game and spot goes to hollywood oh my god yeah spot i goes love to hollywood. Spot goes hollywood. yeah yeah and Clockwork Nights. Uh, yeah. So they were the games and I would just play them. And I, it used to blow my mind that Spot Goes to Hollywood. If you left the controller, it would do stuff on its own. Like he would get out a phone or he'd yeah. wave. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah, and I just so, remember... Like looking, I don't know when the last time you played Spot Goes to Hollywood, but... but probably then. Not a good game. Yeah. Let me tell you, not a good game, but I... I played it so like at the time i absolutely loved it but it, it's that game's hard and it controls yeah. like it's unforgiving and it controls bad but i had that on the playstation and me and my friend used to play it all the time and it that game felt like such an achievement to come like yeah. to get to the end and, and complete Do you remember there, there was the you start off on the pirate level don't you the pirate yeah. ship there was like the yeah. haunted house yeah the, there's I, I don't think i ever got past that but i think <laughs> they were the two i got to i wasn't very good at it like but i used to love it i used to play it all the time and then he had tomb raider and i remember playing to trying to play tomb raider but not doing well i'd get to the first tiger and i'd just be ripped to shreds <laughs> like I, I couldn't do it i i wasn't developed enough to uh understand how that game works but yeah and and linking it to you saying that was my first experience with wipeout mm. i believe and I think it must have been. Yeah, it's Wipeout was yeah. on Saturn, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I've actually, yeah. Yeah, I've got a copy of the Saturn version. Um, I think that, yeah, it started... I wonder if it, it might have came on, out on there before the PlayStation or maybe the same time. I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm not it, sure, it, but it very much became like experience. a... I think PlayStation really propped it up, didn't they? But um, yeah, but but yeah my, I think my uncle got sick of me playing his. So I think it was the same thing that I got... Uh, bought one um, and I remember for six side it's the first time and I was young that I said I won't have a birthday present I'll just have the six side at <laughs> Christmas and bear in mind my birthday's in July it's not like I'm not like a November December child like I was like there's there's a chunk of I had yeah. the perfect birthday period mm. like to Christmas ratio you had enough time to save um, but no I was just like <laughs> No, I'll I'll have it for both. And I remember getting the Sega Saturn. And I think as soon as I got the Sega Saturn, I really wanted the PlayStation. I was I was like, just gonna yeah. say, at what point did you start looking over the fence and then seeing what the other kids were playing? Well, that's the thing. I didn't I didn't know. I wasn't in the loop on other consoles. Mm. So my knowledge of consoles at that point was if someone had one, I would play whatever it was. Um, we had a snares and stuff like that as well. Like, and I'd play it um, and hopefully I'd like it or I wouldn't like it. And when the, when I played the PlayStation and it was Ridge Racer, mm. like I was just like, well, this is quite a good console. But I didn't mm-hmm. get the place. I didn't get the PlayStation until the PS1. You know, they did the small compact oh, wow. yeah yeah that's like really that's what, yeah, yeah, yeah so that's when i got one so i was late into the cycle but i had the saturn up until that point yeah yeah and 
I think I'd played pretty much everything on the sand. We used mm. to, I used to go to the market. We had an indoor market and I'd go on a Sunday and I'd just, I'd trade my games. With my, my, my grandma would take me and I'd take the games I played and I'd just use that and buy and get some more games. And there was a shop um, called Lee's Games uh, where I was from. And the, the owner of that, Andy, like, was such a great guy. Um, from that moment, knew, knew my grandma, knew me trading in. Until the day I left my hometown was the guy that I went to for stuff like that. He, he has a shop there and everything. And even through my life, like when I broke my leg, I was in a cycling accident. I used to do downhill uh, bike, mountain biking. And my front tire buckled and I got launched off and went into the side of a tree. So I broke two ribs, shattered my knee, like, and, uh, and broke my leg. So I couldn't do anything. And he said, take whatever games you want and just yeah. play them and just bring them back just as long as they're pre-owned. Because I was always, I looked after stuff like that anyway. And I'd known him for so many years. He was like, take 10, 15 games, whatever you want. Just bring them back. Cool. And he was such a nice guy. He was always like, so trading wise, I always got good value from him. And so that was how I played everything. I was obsessed. I'd play anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. and yeah, through the Sega Saturn. So when the PlayStation came along, I was like, this has so many possibilities. Yeah. That was it. That was it for me. The PlayStation was like, now things are getting serious. Like, oh. Did you um, have anyone that ever kind of came to your door and did the video rentals or game rentals? No, we didn't have that. No. We, we, are- like, we had Blockbuster. We had to go to those places. Like, yeah. No, we never had it, no. Because, like, well, yeah, we had that. And it's only like now I kind of look ba- back on that. And I feel like Very there must have been concept. something shady going on. Yeah, he, but yeah. he, I have this memory, like, yeah, this guy would come, I guess, like in a van or whatever, like that. And he'd, and he'd come with these, like, several boxes, like, to the door and then open them up. And there'd just be all these, like, kind of, um, right. yeah, like videos or mega, I, I remember clearly the Mega Drive games. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and you, and you just do these kind of, like, rentals. I mean, I can't remember, like, it would have been my parents that like paid. I don't know how, it's how the, the best how, thing ever. It, like, yeah. Uh, we, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It was just like, yeah. And you'd be like, Oh yeah. I'm like this week I want to try Castlevania or, you know, this and play this game. And, um, I just clearly remember that because yeah, you just, like you just jog my memory. Cause there was, we did have a video rental store around the corner and, um, like you were probably the same, like, did you just like used to just go back to the same game all the time and just keep renting the same game out? Quite often, yeah. I remember Blockbuster was the one that we had. Mm. And the this is later on in life. So high school, like me and my friend would go on a Friday and you'd have the weekend to complete the game. Yeah. Or you get that late fee. Yeah, absolutely. Hammering your way through the game to try and yeah. complete it. Like, and they were great. Yeah. That, that was the, the greatest, like just hammering through these games. Mm. Like, and yeah. That, I, I loved that. Like, but no, I think when I was younger, it was more trading. Mm. So I'd complete a game, trade it, get another game, and kind of try and work around. But eventually, you lose so much value. You have to, you know, you have to buy into it again. But yeah. I can't. Rem- I can't really remember too much about the Sega Saturn. I remember I just played everything, like and like Outrun, for example. Mm-hmm. I became a bit of a pro at Outrun, uh, and they were that, they, that was my first real. I want to complete this game, like mm-hmm. you know, because you get they show you that stupid map at the end, and they're like, "You got this far. You only have like two more yeah. stages." Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. come on! <laughs> like, I was a yeah. I was just wanting to complete anything, and I don't do that anymore. But then I was mm-hmm. just like, "Yeah, give it to me, like all of it at once." So you you were there for the beginning, pretty much the beginning of Sega's kind Rise of like fall. Yeah, like yeah. so. Did you were you with them all the way to the end? Did you get the Dreamcast when that came out, or I didn't get the Dreamcast. I was my friend who had the PlayStation didn't want his Dreamcast. 
So he kind of just lent it to me. I said, here's the games, just play it. Mm. So, so I played like, and there wasn't too many that I played on there, to be honest. Uh, the Sonic, is it Sonic Adventures, Sonic, the Sonic open Adventure. world one? Yeah, that, well, open world-ish. Yeah. Um, that one, I remember playing a lot. Um, and that was really about my only memory of the Dreamcast. I really enjoyed that game. Um, but no, the Dreamcast just didn't do it for me. I thought it was a pretty shoddy console compared to the Sega Saturn anyway. And because you have the PlayStation there, mm. like, which was a much better console, yeah, in my opinion, and had better games. Because then you're getting like Grand Theft Auto, yeah, you know, yeah. and those sort of games. Like I was just like, and I was like, okay, and like obviously Tomb Raider was Tomb Raider two on the PlayStation. Tomb Raider, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomb Raider uh, one was that PlayStation one. Yeah, to, uh, to yeah. Play, Tomb Raider one, two, three. Four and five were on PlayStation One. Yeah, you know, what, yeah, for, yeah. Five was Chronicle, Chronicles, but um, yeah. yeah. And if I remember, so, four and Chronicles came out on the Dreamcast. But yeah, yeah I think so. Mm. Um, yeah. So I was kind of by the time the Dreamcast came around, I, my eyes were already somewhere else, and I was just like, yeah. "Well, this is okay. It'll do." But I wanna, I want the PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of like that about the Dreamcast. Um, I, it, it, there, there's certainly some real gems on the Dreamcast, but you mm. had to kind of like find them. And a lot of the stuff was either like stuff that came from Japan, the more kind of quirky stuff. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, they PlayStation were already on their way doing stuff like Metal Gear Solid yeah, and Final Fantasy VII. Whereas like um, the Dreamcast, they were very much focused on um porting like the the arcade stuff of like whatever was hot in the arcades like the the, the few years before you know like crazy yeah. taxi and and you know like just all those kind of things where i think that playstation will already see in the future of like okay now this is what games are these very kind of narrative driven stuff and sega just weren't doing that and that's where they just kind of got left behind but so i i personally like i, I didn't play tons and tons of games on the dreamcast but what i did play i really enjoyed yeah, I think the I think the issue was for me is as you said then that the Dreamcast was predominantly uh, it's a Sega console, but it was mm. a lot of Sega games. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the PlayStation even by then had different companies making the games, and yeah. there's a bit more variety to it, and you're already seeing that even at the early stage of the Dreamcast, the PlayStation I think was still. Mm. I think that was when it put its marker down, really, and the Dreamcast kind of just got left behind. And I don't think Sega put enough into it. I think they realized it was a losing battle quite quickly. And mm. I don't think, yeah, I think they just gave up on it, really. Yeah. And it seems to be one of the forgotten consoles, anyway, of that period, anyway. Mm. So you moved on to PlayStation. So yeah, you got the PS1. Um, do you, how how like is it in your memory of the the playstation 2 being announced or being released or do you have anything like kind of yeah memories attached to that so the playstation 2 i remember my i remember that got released and my best friend at the time's aunt got robbed like in a house Someone broke in mm. and they wrote on the insurance that they had a PlayStation 2 <laughs> and they did not have a PlayStation <laughs> 2 and they got a PlayStation 2. Wow. So they had, that's how he got his PlayStation 2. And I did <laughs> like my family weren't really well off. So I wasn't getting one at launch yeah. and, and that was, that was fine. But I spent 90% of my time at his anyway, his anyway. And I remember seeing the PlayStation 2, and my draw, my jaw was on the floor because mm. I was just like, "This is ridiculous! This has a, ri you can play movies on this, you can do all these things." And my my first handheld experience of a PlayStation Two because he wouldn't let me play it really uh, was GTA Three. Yeah, that was my first time playing wow. a PlayStation Two. Was it? Was yeah, GTA that's 3. a that's a 
I mean, it, it was a, an experience to just experience the launch games, but like to, yeah. to go from whatever yeah. you were playing, like the PS1 to GTA 3, that must have been mind melting. Oh my God. And I was already a big GTA fan by this point. Yeah, yeah. Like I loved GTA, like the, the original uh, top down GTA London, mm. all of them. I loved them. Um, so when GTA 3 came out, I was like, in awe mm. like and could not believe it so i remember saying i need this so i did the same again don't buy me anything for my birthday yeah <laughs> just get me a playstation 2 for christmas yeah. and they got me a playstation 2 and the games i got were gta 3 max Payne 2 i think it yeah. was one of the max Payne's that came out that year Smackdown, here comes the pain. And I think that was it. And the movie was The Patriot. Mm. Like, and that was the first film I watched on my PlayStation, uh, <laughs> PlayStation 2. And I didn't need any other games. I was yeah, just happy yeah. with what I had there. And yeah, I was from that moment, I was a PlayStation guy, I think. I, I've never been going back to to GTA three. I've never yeah. been more proud to be so wrong about GTA three because I remember when I remember reading because same as you, like I was such a big fan of the of GTA and GTA London. I didn't really, I don't think remember I played much of GTA two, but um, I remember reading in the magazine saying that GTA three is going to be this like three D. Um, well, and I just like oh, I was like so disappointed because I was just like because I'd seen ruin it. so many yeah. games. Like I specifically remember like Worms games that I loved that were two D, mm. and then they and then they went three D because you know PlayStation was three D and it, everyone had to kind of jump on the bandwagon. And some stuff just didn't work. You know what I mean? Didn't work. Yeah. It didn't look good. It wasn't quite. And I was just like, and I remember really thinking, oh great, that's gonna be terrible. There's no way they can make a 3D game of like, and give you that much exploration that they did in GTA. And so I just completely wrote it off. I remember seeing pictures of it in, in, um, in, in games magazine, just thinking, you know, it's not going to be any good. And then it, it, it come out and I don't think I'd read any reviews about it or anything like that. And I remember I was going in, I was in game and I, I had some birthday money or something like that. I was, I was going to get a couple of games. And it, I remember this clearly. And my cousin was like, Oh, and he picked up the case and it was in the shop. And he's like, yeah, he said, my mate's got this. He said, it's really, like he said, it's amazing. It's really good. I was like, really? And I was looking at it. I was like, okay, I'll, 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 get, I'll get it then. I'm going to give it a go. Yeah. And that was that, wasn't it? Because yeah. it was just, <laughs> it was just like a holy experience. It was yeah. just, yeah, in, insane, insane. But that game. Yeah, like, just um... unbelievable. But yeah, the PS2 in general, do you think like, well, I don't think we will. I think that was truly the last like you say, jaw-dropping moment of that here's next-gen tech. Like, we got it in the bit, like, with the with the, the 360 and PS3 because we had that go into HD thing. But even yeah. so, that wasn't the jump. Do you think that we had from Saturn PS1 to, to yeah, PS2? Yeah, I'd say that's the biggest jump that we've had from a visual. Yeah. Um, like, you went from very rough, like, polygon, like style graphics into a much smoother 3d environment and the size of the games were yeah getting bigger and bigger like and yeah you look at the games that came out on the playstation one to the games that came out on the playstation 2 and it's well i remember apart. seeing those first screenshots of metal gear solid 2 you know like and being oh, like yeah. what like how was that even possible yeah it's ridiculous and like you look at the facial animations on a PlayStation 1 game, and then you look at them on a PlayStation well, they're 2. Not there. and the, <laughs> they're just not Yeah, there. they're not there. It's just like a rough shape <laughs> and two dots where I should be, yeah. basically. But And then you look at uh, PlayStation 2, and it was just like, this is incredible. But then, I, yeah, I don't think anything has come close. Because no. you look at what the PlayStation 2, the games that came on the PlayStation 2, yeah, like that just revolutionized gaming and started where we're at today mm. like and gta is a big part of that because you have the main gta trilogy 
on the PlayStation 2 mm. in obviously Vice City and San Andreas as well. And those games like pushed the PlayStation 2 to its absolute limits. Oh, yeah. And Vice City is still a really enjoyable game to play today. If you plug in a PlayStation 2 and play it, you can mm. have so much fun in that game. Mm. Same with San Andreas. But then you look at all... I think there's not a genre of games that came on the PlayStation 2 that wasn't improved dramatically from what was on the PlayStation 1. And I think that's yeah. very hard to say on other consoles going forward. I don't think the jump's been anywhere near as big. No, no. But yeah. So did you, um, did you continue like with this going into the next, next gen, like the, 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 the you know, 360 and, and PS3 or? I went PS3. No, sorry. I went 360 because I wanted to play Oblivion. Mm. Yeah. And that was obviously, I think that was, a, was that a launch title for 360 or very soon after? Was it? I think, it, it, yeah, I, I, I remember it being, if it wasn't launch, it was very soon after. Well, because, yeah, yeah so, exactly the yeah. same for me. That's yeah. what happened. I to went me. to play Oblivion. Yeah. Right? So I was just like, okay, I'll get the 360. And I stayed with the 360 for a while. But, and, cause, and the PlayStation 3 was ridiculously expensive. And it was delayed. Yeah. And it was delayed and it was ridiculously expensive. Mm. And I was like, I ain't paying full price for this. Yeah. Like, let's bring that down a little bit. Come on now, Sony. So um, yeah. I waited. And yeah, but I went to 360 for a while. And but I got two like red rings of death. <laughs> yeah. Like before I even got to the PlayStation 3. So when the PlayStation 3, <laughs> I finally got my hands on the PlayStation 3. I was like, I am done with Xbox. Yeah, yeah. This like, is pretty much all like, the same, all the yeah. same for me. Yeah, yeah. And then the only reason I've got a PlayStation One is because I won it from Taco Bell. Oh yeah, you said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I won it from Taco Bell. Otherwise, That's I don't so think cool. I got one. Which and don't get me wrong, it's a great console. Like the UI is terrible, but yeah, uh, I just from that moment I was like PlayStation. And I remember the first game I played on the PlayStation Three was Jason: The, the Rise of the Argonauts. <laughs> or whatever that monstrosity of a game was. But, yeah. Uh, that was the first game I played on the PlayStation 3. And then obviously I was in Metal Gear Solid 4 and stuff like that with mm. GTA and everything. It was it's funny because I, I, I bought my say so pretty much the same thing for me. I was so hyped for the PlayStation 3. Yeah. I remember I even me and my friend, like in my first job, we even booked the day off uh for yeah. the launch, which was meant to be in 2006 i can't remember whenever whenever it was meant to be it was meant to be like november or something like that yeah. and they delayed it to like whatever it was like six months and, and i was like ah, oh, it was like april or something it came yeah out and then the 360 like came out and yeah. um and then i saw oblivion i was like i was like well screw it i'm gonna get a 360 mm. um but then i think eventually when when the playstation 3 came out it was about two or three months after it came out um I had the money to kind of get one and it was someone we knew they had won it in a competition, mm. um, but they didn't want it. And I bought it off of them with Motorstorm. And wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mo yeah. Motorstorm. That was, that was close for like that whole visual, yeah. like jump. That was like pretty impressive. Like, yeah. Yeah. The high that it churned the mud up and left like, Oh, yeah. it was, yeah. I still love that game. Still love that game. But so did no, you, yeah. Once you kind of like before you got the PS3, were you playing much of it like Xbox Live? Was you did, did you like no, or no, not at all? No, no, I to this day really don't enjoy online gaming that, often, okay. that much. Um, I don't mind games that have online gaming going in the background as long as it doesn't interfere in my game. It's very rare for me to go, yeah, I'm going to play this online. Mm. I much prefer just playing on my own or couch co-op i would i'd play online with someone if i if they were a friend or something like that but even yeah, then yeah most of the people i was playing with were with me like right, so we yeah. just play it um split screen if we could so mm. and uh to be honest i'm in, 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 in i'm trying to think my uh we didn't get the internet in my house till a lot later than we should have I was begging to get the internet and I don't think my grandma really understood what the internet was. Mm. So she was like, we're not paying this monthly fee for this box to be put <laughs> yeah. in. And I was just like, oh, come on. We didn't get the internet until it was broadband. 
Wow. So we didn't so have the dial-up like, connection or anything like that. So, so probably like uh, like. 2003 2002 2003 yeah, like 2003 yeah. 2004 something like that i think yeah it was late like uh, if yeah. i needed to do any work online i had to go to my best friend's house and yeah, I'd yeah. work on his computer and have the dial-up where you couldn't have the use the phone at the same time and all that shit that's what I, yeah 56k yeah. that's what yeah. that's what we had so i couldn't yeah so i didn't have the internet for ages so that was never an option yeah so and then we finally got the internet and i was just like okay and then there's nothing there's nothing that i wanted you're to like um, captain america internet so helpful yeah. you know yeah so helpful i can learn all these things this is great um and then i went to uni like a week later so uh it's absolutely <laughs> pointless uh no i went to sixth form and and uni and everything and so gaming then was a lot you couldn't game in halls or residence the internet was just terrible so is that oh, the yeah. period where you because remember you mentioned that like, you kind of stopped playing games for a while was that during the ps3 time or it was no the end of the ps3 into the beginning of the ps4 okay because i was abroad so i started working for tui and taken my first contract abroad no sorry my third contract abroad but this is where i was going full time so okay. the PlayStation 4 released. I didn't buy it because I knew I wasn't going to be able to take it anywhere with me. Um, I played a few games. And just before I left, GTA 5 came out. Hmm. And I played GTA 5 and said, this is probably the greatest game that there's ever been <laughs> yeah. uh, in terms of technical achievement. And I didn't play it again for like five years. Well, four years or whatever it was until I managed to, I was staying somewhere for 18 months. So I was like, I'm going to get a TV. I'm going to order it. Yeah. And I yeah. bought myself a, a console and I just played it. Um, it. Yeah. This is what happens with GTA. It's like, it's like, um, it's like a sun, you know, and everything orbits yeah. around that. So I think it's yeah. the benchmark in gaming. I think yeah. it's the, you kind of know where you were when a GTA came out. Mm. Because it if it doesn't affect you directly, it at least affects gaming, and it be, yeah. becomes this all encumbering, like encompassing thing. And um, I know we've talked about it on campaign mode quite a lot about the power of GTA, and I know I've used it quite a lot. But it's just because I can. It's just always been the pinnacle of gaming when Rockstar released something. Yeah, like Red Dead is up there as well, obviously, and. GTA for me is so many important markers in my life yeah, were same. GTA. So and my it's greatest like, memory, like a constant. Yeah. yeah, it's a constant. When s that whole when you have that summer of hype with your friend, mm. where you're swapping magazines and everything, was me for San Andreas. Yeah, where we would share every little detail of this game. Yeah, like oh my god, you can get fat, like. Like if you yeah. run too much, you could have a heart attack. Like all of these sort of things, like <laughs> blowing our mind. Like what? You go to the gym, your character changes. Like, and it was just blowing our mind. The map is the biggest thing. If you walk around it, it'll take you two days in real time. Yeah. Like oh, absolute bollocks. But you'd see it written somewhere. And you go, that must be true. Like yeah. it was. Uh... But the hype for that game, and that game got delayed, and that was my first oh, experience God. of soul crushing, like end of the world. Like, what do you mean? Like, there's just something about that. like, yeah, the the hype of the anticipation. Like, even like now with six. But I remember when um, before Vice City was, I think it might have been announced, or we didn't know where it was going to be set. And I remember even back then, you know, playing just GTA three nonstop. Um, me and a friend of mine who he he was learning how to make like Flash websites and stuff oh, like, yeah. using Flash software. Yeah, and um we used to go frequently go on these like G I can't remember what it's called now. I wish I knew now, but there was like a GTA fan site back then. Yeah. This is, I'm talking like, this is obviously like 2001, 2000, whatever it was. And, um, 
I used to go on them all the time and be reading all the rumors about where this Nick new GTA is going to be set and, and, and stuff. Like that. And we wanted to make our own website and post back then. It was just about like, you know, if there were screenshots, you'd post them on the, on the website and stuff like that. I don't, we didn't, we never actually did it. Like we did like designs and templates of the site. We never actually did it. But I remember clearly in college, um, uh, I, when I did it and, me and a friend of mine um he, who may even he listens to the to the show actually sometimes but um we had to do like a design uh, a website like for, as part mm. of, a, of a course and gta san andreas had been announced but all we had was the logo there may oh, have okay. even been like the first bit of artwork where you're seeing them all kind of on the on the on a bike you know on a bikes, bmx yeah. And we were just like designing the whole website around that. Just like put that as the background, like and, and rumors and like what, you know, what it's going to be about. And, and so hype, just wanting just every little bit of information oh. we could just, it's, there's just something about it, isn't there? It's just, uh, like there you said, you like can remember MSN the times well. and the, yeah. yeah. Like, so me and my friend would just be chatting and send like, saying, oh my God, look at this, look at this, look at this. Like, yeah. Oh, it was, it was just that time in your life when you can actually appreciate what's coming months away than what's out right now. Yeah. Like seeing the bigger picture, I think for me, that was definitely that time for me. And going, oh my God, like this game is going to be incredible. And mm-hmm. being so laser focused on it um, for me was, yeah, I think my first proper experience of that. Like, and then it only really comes around for GTA and Red Dead Redemptions. Yeah. Where I get suckered into the hype. Like, <laughs> like every other game, I can kind of keep a level head and go, okay, I can't wait to play this when it comes out. Mm. The exception being if a, a new Metal Gear Solid that had, like, like obviously it had Hideo Kojima attached to it, then <laughs> I'd probably lose my shit. But yeah, no, GTA is just such a big part of my life. Right. So when um when GTA five came out then you said that kind of brought you back. So do you feel like that from that moment all onwards you were kind of fully back into uh to playing again? Because you got the you picked up the PS4, uh, did you got it quite Yeah, so I picked up the PS4. I picked up the PS4. So when GTA five first came out was as I was leaving. So I missed it for a bit. Once I got it, I played it religiously for the 18 months. And then I sold the console to the person who was moving in after me because I, where I was going, I wouldn't have had the time. So, and it wasn't really the safest place to take a console. So I was, uh, I was going to be in the middle of nowhere basically. So I just wasn't going to take it. So I did two more seasons and then I met my, well, now wife uh, in Cos in Greece. And she left, she was on holiday there and I was working there and she was in a bar getting with her friend, one of her best friends, Ranj, and they were getting chatted up by two waiters from the hotel. Um, these guys were notorious, like just sleeve bags, mm. um, absolute sleeve bags. And you could see that neither of them were really interested, trying to move away a little bit. And these guys were persistent. And so I just went over like, and just said, hey, do you want to come sit with... I, my friend was... We were doing the evening show there, so he was DJing and I was comparing um, f- just uh, for the guests. We'd done the evening show. I said, just come sit over here. Like, w- we work here. You can just talk to us. Mm. Anyway, we got chatting and that was it. We, we s- were supposed to meet the next evening, but... I finished later than she was going to be there. And then she flew home, but we kept kept in touch. And I went to do a season in Spain teaching and she came over at the end of that. So this must be 2016. Mm. She came over just to see me for, for my birthday. My, my mum had just died, but I was still um, in in Spain, I didn't have the best relationship with my mum anyway. So she came over around my birthday just to cheer me up a little bit. And we'd been talking. And then when she left, I realized that I didn't really want to be there without her. So mm. I decided to just go, fuck it. I'm going to go live in London. 
that's where that's where she was. So I was like, you know, this big romantic thing. I'm gonna fly there and like we'll be together. That'll be that. Mm. And I went to fly there. There was a plane strike, so I ended up driving. So I rented a car, and then there was, I, I if you remember, there was the terror. At the, I think it was in Lille where the lorry ran, drove into people in France. Yeah, I do remember that's that. When, yeah. That's when I was trying to travel. Right. So they shut the border. So I was stuck at the border. So it took me like an extra, wow. I think like day of sleeping in the car. Like mm. I got to Paris, got the Eurostar in the end and came here and we got together and everything was fine. And I think by... So that was in July. By August, I had a PlayStation 4. I was back and that was it. Mm. I was like, this is where I'm going to be now. I'm, I, I know this is who I'm going to spend my life with. I might as well just get, get not a PlayStation you're not 4. Talk, you're not talking about the PlayStation 4? Yeah, yeah, it's PlayStation 4. Um, <laughs> and then... This is it now, PlayStation 4. That was 4. it, yeah. I'm going to spend my life so, with it. That was it, yeah, in case it's that as well, I guess. But uh, <laughs> the... Uh, I knew, so I thought, okay, yeah, let's get a PlayStation 4, first game, GTA 5, get that back, have that there. I managed to play The Last of Us for the first time, because like, I didn't get to play it originally. Um, so yeah, I put up on all these games that I'd missed, and from that moment, it was just all-encompassing games. I was yeah. catching up on everything that I'd missed over a patchy seven years really where I didn't get to play as often as I wanted to because of where I was but yeah I was I've made up for lost time that's for sure I think that's where that's kind of where I'm at right now like in it but you know like a little bit like yeah um I'm I I I had the PS4 like uh, you know on launch but and I had a couple of years and then I kind of dropped off and now yeah I feel like I've the last year or so I've been catching up with a like a four or five year period where I just everything just kind of mounted up and it was a lot of games obviously as you know big in that, games, yeah, yeah in that four or five year period so yeah kind of just like kind yeah, of but you in. had in that period of time you've had two children yeah like, yeah so yeah. it's understandable that you're not going to be able to play as much like, exactly I, I remember feeling so happy that like when you were telling me that you didn't get to play much because obviously you had two kids and I was just like <laughs> sucker <laughs> like and now obviously uh Casey's pregnant and I'm going to be a dad. And now I'm like, for fuck's sake, like, I just (laughs) want to play games. Like, I just want, I just want to, just want to play my games. You know, I don't want to have to, it's like, just get on with it. It's an easy life at the moment. And now she has to go and ruin it. So, uh, yes, it'll be happy and lovely and whatever, but I just want to play (laughs) my games, man. So go, go moving on to that subject. Um, As you mentioned, um, you both having a baby, so congratulations! Thank you very much. And um, this is—is um, is this something that you guys had always like? Since, like when you first met, is it something that you talked about, like potentially well, about having a family in the future? Or I never wanted children. I didn't see children in my life, um, and. Even though I'd worked with children and stuff like that, uh, I just never saw them for me. But I never saw marriage really as being a thing for me because my life had been working away so much. It was you couldn't have a relationship really because every six months you're moving. There's no guarantee of moving together or whatever. So I was to be like, oh, okay. Then I met when I met Casey and we we, we got together. I was like, I'm going to marry you. So we were engaged after a month. Like we'd been talking for years, bear in mind, but we were engaged after a month. As I said, mm. you're the person I'm going to spend my life with. Then she said, oh, yeah, you know, I want children and stuff like that. And I was just like, well, if that's what you want, then that's fine. So just give me some time. Mm. Like, you know, let me just enjoy life just a little bit longer. Uh, <laughs> and then, Get that sleep while you can, all yeah. right? Get that sleep. So, so then, not to go into too much detail, uh, last year she was getting more serious about it. And I was like, okay, all right, well, yeah, we'll see what happens. If it happens, it happens. I'm, I'm open to it. 
And then at the beginning of this year, like January, she was like, oh, let's try properly, do it all, you know, on the dates, blah, 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 all of this. And I was like, sure, okay, thinking this is going to take, you know, still, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. you got to keep going. At it. First fucking time. First fucking time. I was just like, okay. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah. Like, and that's just how it was. I was just like, I thought, do you know what? I can probably get another GTA in. I can probably yeah. cram in yeah. another GTA. That's why I was hoping. I was hoping that in June at E3, they're like, here's a new GTA. I'm like, yes, yeah. I might get this by next year, you know, nine months, like do this, blah, blah, blah. But no, that's not going to fucking Exactly hope. the same yeah. when we had them. It was, it was yeah. the same thing. We, 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 got, yeah. we got married in 2013. Yeah. yeah 2013 and um and then yeah uh, my wife Kerry she was like well yeah you know next next year I want you know yeah. try for a baby kind of thing so yeah same thing you're thinking well next year that's like you know if it happens yeah, it'll be like maybe towards the end of the year it yeah, might go into the following year we've got that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I shit you not <laughs> New Year's Day no 2014 6 a.m she wakes me up uh, i'm pregnant no. I, i'm like are you kidding me that You've like been hung over as well sure yeah i was hung over yeah. because we'd been drinking like i'd, well, I'd been yeah. drinking like and yeah. um i just couldn't i couldn't believe it i was like well see i got six hours in six hours into the year i thought i was gonna get a good six to nine months in of like that's what i thought yeah uh, yeah no it creeps I up couldn't on believe you. it couldn't believe it and then it was one of those things like when she starts to say just casually in conversation starts to drop things that are kind of symptoms i was just like and i was just like no <laughs> it's a coincidence no can't be this soon That's not it. be yeah. this soon yeah. and then the next one and the next one and then we she had the test and she came down and it was like i had told her basically she was the one in shock and panicking and i, I was i I shit you not. I was trying to eat beans on toast. <laughs> <laughs> I made myself beans on toast. I'm sat there and she's like, it's positive. But it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like a clear blue. It's like a cheap brand. But the, so the line was really faint. So she was like, well, it's just faint. It might not mean anything. You know, I'm yeah. probably not pregnant. I don't know. I'm not pregnant. Did, I was did you going, study that small print? Casey did. Yeah. Like, I didn't care. Like, not, I did. I was just like, if you're pregnant, you're pregnant and that, that's yeah, what yeah. you wanted that's what we wanted there you go that's great i wanted it to be a little bit later <laughs> you know <laughs> i wanted that bit more time but sure yeah that, that's great and i was okay with it right after about an hour of i couldn't eat my beans on toast i tell you that that went in the bin but um i walked the dog so and by the time shame. i come back from walking the dog and talking to the dog religiously on the way around um I felt okay. And it took Casey a lot longer to, she got mm. the clear blue one that tells you in words, pregnant, like and the, <laughs> and how, how far letter. gone you are. And she told her best friend so, who's got two children. And so was a real big help. And I was kind of like, okay, well, this is, this is what it is now. And then my brain starts going like, okay, but we've got shifty crab. How do I do work shifty crab and a child i was like okay well we can set up a schedule for this i can do that mm, i've got the mm. soundproof in i can do that um i can have a visual baby monitor i was like no problem <laughs> like setting all this up and casey's just like i'm going to have a child and i'm like yeah but it's okay because shifty crab will be fine babe i'm like it's actually, i'm not on about shifty crab <laughs> <laughs> you're like what about my child already yeah. I was my like, child. i've just gave birth to this thing like you know like <laughs> and it, like and then yeah so we're both, we had the scan last week. So obviously it's, uh, it's all, all good. Yeah. So now she's kind of coming around to the idea. I'm already, I don't want to be involved in the first three years, basically like two years at a push. I'm just like, yeah, that's great. I obviously will be involved disclaimer for the video and I'm very looking forward <laughs> to it. I just want to be able to teach them things. And I can't wait to get to the point where they can start to see things that I enjoy. Yeah. have conversations that's why i'm looking forward to whereas casey really loves the little baby yeah things and stuff you, like you, that. i mean you, you I, I was the same i was like yeah. um in that very in that mindset but 
yeah you i mean you'll you'll just you'll just wait and see like because yeah. something just happens like literally on that day and um yeah that, it's that. it and it, and it does like i mean obviously we'll get to all this like as we speak further down the line but yeah. such a cliche but you just have to just kind of take in every single moment like every yeah. single day and week because it literally does just fly by, fly by like yeah. i look at like you know i'm looking at we, we do it every day like we have things that pop up going oh here's a picture from like five years ago Memories, so you know, yeah and you're like what like how is that even like, i don't even remember them like looking like that you know at that yeah. age that like, you just could you just you, each week you just kind of just taking it and then you're just like wow that was like it seems so long ago the whole baby thing just seems so foreign to me now like even though it was like flew by that just seems like a different a completely different time it's crazy but um no you're gonna have you're gonna have a great them, yeah. great great time it's the the thing that what worries me the most is the whole like it's a tiny little human and yeah. that there's that side of it obviously but then there's also just the sleep and stuff like that yeah is uh, yeah. obviously non-existent yeah that's the killer like, that yeah killer. so but then she's like yeah, we'll have this one, then we'll have another. I was like, whoa, 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 sweet child of mine. I was like, <laughs> I was like, let's see how one goes. Let's see, because I'm an only child, so I'm an advocate for only child's not so bad. Yeah. Like you know, she's very much her family is quite a big family. You mm. know, she's, so she's like, no more children. I'm like, no, because I let, let me. I'll let you into a little bit of a, a, a very quick history lesson here of my office. We lived in a place called Perthley. Mm-hmm. Um, I know perfectly well. Order of Essex into Thorock near London for the, uh, the non South people here. Uh, and it was an amazing house. We, it, was, it had like, it was a duplex, but it was flipped. So the top floor looked over the river, was just all one big living room and dining room. Mm. And all the rooms were downstairs. Um, it was a two floor flat. So it had three bedrooms. So me and Casey had ours. We had a spare bedroom, which my brother-in-law pretty much moved into from the November. Um, he had come back from South Korea. And in the middle was a room that the landlord had used for storage. And he said, we could get rid of all that stuff. And I turned it into an office. Like, and it had my screens and my lights and all my editing software, my keyboard, my guitar. I was just like, yes. Then lockdown happened and Casey had to work from home. My brother-in-law had to work from home and I was on furlough. So I didn't have to work from home. So my stuff just got pushed further and further down the side and their desk came in uh, into thing. And I lost my office. I had it for about a month. Like, and then I decorated it, painted it, had all my stuff on the walls. I remember and... when you, um, so, so the, the, the room you're in at the moment, yeah. Is this a different, is this a, oh no, this is a different building, is it? But, um, this is a different building, but it's the same layout. Are you, yeah. are, are you, you can, you still got this room or is this being claimed by the baby or what's happening? No. There? So, <laughs> this is what I was getting to. So, I was like, I got this office sorted. And then when we started Shifted Crab, I got everything sorted, all the lights and everything that I needed, mm. still more to go. Um, I was just like, okay. And then Casey gets pregnant and I'm like, Okay, and the first thing I said to her is like, I love you dearly, but if you touch my office, I'm divorcing you. I was like, I just want my office. So we have a big second room. Uh, well, it's not big. It's, a, you know, what these houses are like, but uh, which is Casey's office and a spare room at the moment. We're going to move Casey's desk into here to put at the end. But she's going to take a year's maternity. Um, so she's not going to need it. So she's going to store it at the end of here. So you won't even see it on the camera. Hmm. I'll lose a little bit of space. And then we're going to turn that room into a nursery. Because we've got one of those Ikea beds that is a, so like you slide it in and it's like a, a day bed. Yeah. And then you yeah. can pull it out into a double. So it doesn't take up much room. Decorate that. She wants to do Winnie the Pooh. So uh, we're going to do Winnie the Pooh in there. And then my office kind of stays 90% my office. Yeah. Now after a year is the issue so because then when casey has to go back to work um but we think that we're probably going to move okay like and go to a bigger house and stay uh, stay in the area yeah probably but um maybe go east anglia way maybe go 
somewhere within an hour of where we are, really. Um, hey, moving out, moving hour this way, moving yeah, out this then, way. You're not, not just too keep going far. that way. Like, yeah, we'll move into the same uh, same housing area. That'll be it. Yeah, it's so, weird actually because yeah, I mean, I used to live. My parents still live in in Fobin, which is in Thurrock. Uh, uh, yeah comes on the third council it's not too far from perfectly at all it's no, just it's down not. the road I think, I think i've driven through for yeah 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 so um weird small world so where, where did you what area did you grow up in like where was you born you grow up? okay so i grew up in morecambe lancashire and uh, it's only famous for two things eric morecambe yeah morecambe and wise uh and there was a cockle picking disaster where a load of cockle pickers i think they were chinese um drowned in the bay um and bodies were washing up on the shore jesus but yeah it was it was horrific i was at high school and where my high school is is on the seafront basically it mm. was just off the road and there was army helicopters news and there was just screens of bodies with white like bags you know like the body bags or the white sheets over them just lined up on the beach They'd gone out, and where we live, Morecambe Bay, mm. one, it's really dangerous because it it's, has a lot of quicksand with the further out you go, but it's famous for the best cockles in the world, basically. So a lot is collected there. But the way the bay comes in is it comes in around you, mm. and they hadn't paid attention, and if, if it's going to be a high tide, it comes in fast. So they were out there in the middle, and the tide came in behind them. And it's basically an estuary of the North Sea. Yeah. So it's cold and it's powerful. Massive current in there. And once you're in there, you're, you're screwed. How many were like, there? Well, there's hundreds, but I don't think hundreds died. And Jeez. But it was a lot. Mm. Uh, I can... Let me see if I can bring it up. But um, it was... We were at school and they had to shut the road um, to because it was distressing for the mm. the children, obviously, because there, there was bodies washing up. That's crazy. Uh, the, well, they only found 21. They, they only found 21 of them, but they, were expect, they, they think there was a lot more. So crazy it was it's so yeah not to bring a, a, a but they're the only two things that my hometown was famous for it was such a small place mm. there was this there's a roundabout called the shrimp roundabout uh because the football team is called the shrimp um Morkham, like, and it said morecambe bay on the roundabout and then there's a little sign a little pick up like picket sign that someone had put there said a place you go to die like and because it was just an old person town mm. and that must have been there when I was in high school and it was still there the day I left Morecambe. Jeez. The council just didn't move it. <laughs> They're like, so, no, it was, it was a, it was a dead town. It was a summer. It was a huge town in like the sixties and the seventies mm. and then Blackpool overtook it. So all of the attractions died. And so growing up, there was nothing there. So Nothing. what age what age were you when you when you left the like, Morecambe? Um fully left eighteen. Because mm. I went to uni and I didn't really come back. And I I I came back briefly for little bits and bobs, but no, I was gone really. I don't think I I haven't been back since twenty one was the last time I went back and I've never stepped foot in the town since. And I'm now 32. So, and so you said um, you went to to uni. Um, mm. When you, I mean, when you left uni, did you, when you when, when did you join? Um, Straight away. Two? I was okay. doing TUI while I was at uni. Okay. Okay. Um, I would go. I'd finish my finish uni in like the, the May or the June, and I'd fly out, do the summer season, and then fly straight back to uni. Yeah. Um, so I was already doing it. I didn't go to my graduation because right. my flight was already booked. Oh, so I, I didn't. I didn't. I never picked up my actual degree. Like, like I have my degree, but I never picked it actually no. for my graduation. I didn't do it. I uh, flew straight out. Well, actually, I didn't. I went to. 
the Isle of Wight. Mm. That's where they did their training. You'd live in a static caravan for two weeks and you'd do all the new training, like in the Zorbs, you know, the big inflatable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. do all that. You do all your lifeguard training, your archery training and stuff like that. So, what so made you'd you go there? What made go you on, like, what, like, before you get to that, what, what made you want to do this anyway? Is it something that you'd always wanted to do or just like one particular thing? Or, oh, I want to give that a try or go to that particular place? I was desperate to not be a hometown person. Mm. So there's been so many people older than me that had just lived there their whole life, knew everybody mm. and were settled with that. And it just, it's always been my nightmare mm. to be that. So, and when we went on holiday as a child, we only ever went, and I'm not saying only because it was much better than most people, I'm sure. We went to Mallorca, Magaluf, because my grandma owned bars in Magaluf. Mm. She run bars all her life. So every October, we'd go to Magaluf. I never saw anywhere else. That was my only experience of being abroad. So when I saw these places in films and stuff like that, I was like, I want to go to them. But I couldn't afford that, I, you know, in my hometown. And my family didn't have much money. And I wasn't going to ask them to pay for me to travel. So I was like, what sort of job could I do? And I always loved sport. And I was always really sporty. And I, like, so I thought, and I was talking to a friend of mine and they said that their brother had gone to do be an activities coach abroad. I was like, well, what's that? He's like, they're called animators. I was like, well, that's drawing. They're like, no, not over <laughs> there. It's not like you join an animation team and you basically run all the activities. Now you think of those things that you see like Benidorm and stuff like that, but I thought, okay, well, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go to a proper company. Mm. So I, I looked at Thomas Cook and stuff like that. And Tui had a thing that I was interested in. So I applied with, I was on, no, sorry, that's wrong. I went to a company first called um, Escape and I was working at, I, I, and that was my first company. Then they were pretty decent. And I did my first season with them and I was in Cos. The, for the first time it was the first mm. season I did and a guy on holiday there worked for Tui and he says you're better than this so he's like here's my number and email address or whatever and he said get in touch and let's see if we can get you to work at Tui mm. and Tui were in the travel industry in Europe Tui is probably the biggest their biggest rivals Disney for holiday like resorts and stuff like that. They're really? huge. Bigger than you think because a lot of companies are actually under Tui. Yeah. Yeah. Like um so I went to them and they send you to the Isle of Wight and you do these two weeks in these diet caravans and you've got your suitcase. And then on your final day you do an assessment. Um and you're assessed on activities, then you then you do some exams, you have to pass like safeguard and you have to pass your lifeguard and um whatever they need you for that season so like archery so i'm technically not now because it'll run out but i was a gb qualified archery instructor really like oh, yeah can you teach me i've always wanted to learn how to do archery properly like, i've had like a couple I of goes here terrible but... at oh, archery man. but i could I, I could technically safely run an, uh, a course and i got <laughs> better at it but the first time man they like i don't know how i got away with it lifeguarding yeah. was okay but archery like it was just about how you held stuff and they had to how to repair stuff basically and health and safety but then what they do is they take you into a room i can ma imagine like a big school hall basically mm. and you go upstairs and you get given a desk number that you need to go to and it's like a, a, a booth basically and you go in there and they tell you if you passed or if you failed and they give you a score and then they tell you which country you're going to or if you're going home and what see well, like you don't know. You go in there and they say, okay, you're going to Egypt and your taxi is booked for 5 a.m. tomorrow and you have a big leaving party that night anyway. And you go the next day and that's where and you're you... going to be for the next six months. Really? You don't know where you're going. Well, you, well, it's going to be like six months minimum or you know it's going to be like a year. You, like... you, you can go in on it. There's a temp course, which is three yeah. months where you go to fill in. There's six months, which is a standard. And then once you've done one six month, you could go for which is called the layover but it's 18 months yeah 
like do you do a huge 12 months to 18 months um i did a six month and while i was on the six month i got put onto an 18 month and that turned into seven years like of just mm-hmm. summer winter summer winter summer winter non-stop so wow. i'd fly from like egypt to morzine in the french alps do a ski season so um doing the chalets doing the doing the airport runs and I'd ski through the day uh, or snowboard um, badly, but I'd snowboard. And then I'd fly back from there to say Morocco or Ibiza or wherever they needed me. It wasn't rep work. So don't think like you see on the, in the films. Cause I was yeah. mainly in these big all inclusive hotels. Um, but yeah, you don't know where you're going. And even w- and when you're on season, they just send you basically, you get a letter given to you from your boss. Mm. saying you say they tell you like halfway through your season are you wanting to stay on or are you going to have a break and you and then you choose how long you want to stay on for and if they're happy with your progress you get a letter saying with it basically plane tickets and it's like you're off to cyprus like you leave you leave in a week like, and you you finish up there you fly there mm. and i did it for seven years and by the end of it you just, I didn't know where I was. Yeah. Because I'd just gone to... It sounds I did amazing, four, though. Like, it sounds, it like sounds great, but I did 42 countries in seven years. Yeah. Because by my last my last three years, I was basically an overseer. So they'd fly me from hotel to hotel and make mm. sure everything was running right, and I'd fill in. Because I had high ropes experience, so I could do the zip wire um, and stuff like that. They'd fly me in, and I'd go and do that so I did 42 countries not different countries sorry but 42 different countries in seven years so yeah, flying, yeah, yeah. um still a lot of countries though and by the end of it I I remember I was in Egypt Egypt was my last trip in Egypt uh, was probably when I realized that we had got up at 3 a.m. because we'd won an award and we were going to do a photo shoot. So we managed to get quad bikes and we quad biked in Sinai Desert to partway up Mount Sinai to see the sunrise in the desert to spell out the like 100 in the in the sand because we'd got perfect scores. Um, and it's one of the most picturesque places in the world. And I didn't feel anything. I was just like, okay, let's do this. And then I'm going to go back and go to sleep. And I knew at that point, I yeah, was like, like I'm done. Yeah, like, I'm done. Yeah. If I can't enjoy this moment. And bear in mind, I did all this. I hate flying. Really? Hate it, man. I'm not terrified. Like, like I'm, sc- I'm nervous. I'm not going to be sat one of them going, oh, we're going to die. Like, and shaking yeah, like this yeah, the whole yeah. flight. Hate it from start to finish. Hate the airport. Hate all of it. Like, uh, I don't mind landing. But the, yeah, so I'd done the seven years. I was just like, I'd, and I was in Cars. I'd gone to a different company. I'd finished with Tui, um, went to Cars. And then that's when, obviously, when I met Casey and that was my last season. And I came to England and I realized I had no fucking skills. Because hmm. working for, working for Tui and doing all this does not look great on your CV. Does not, does not go well to an office job. Um, so man that was hey, rough you, you, you cultured <laughs> yeah like cultured like but doesn't help when you're going like trying to be well, they like, say a, um a travel broadens the mind like, or whatever you know something like that yeah it was good don't get me wrong like the the plus side of it was for seven years i didn't pay a drop of rent mm. didn't have to pay for any food and got paid an english salary in every country I went to. So in Egypt, for example, it was 11 Egyptian pounds to the English pound. So a pint of beer was about 25p. Yeah. Like in the equivalent of what I would be spending. Now you could go swim with dolphins and it would cost you about a fiver. We rented a boat for my birthday, literally rented the boat, went snorkeling, the instructor, and there was 20 of us and it cost us each about 15 pounds mm. like it was Crazy. you could get away with so much we hired out a whole water park 
one evening, had a DJ, the whole place open to ourselves for the whole <laughs> team. For our, well, a load of the teams got together. Yeah. Absolutely battered going down a crazy river, like <laughs> lazy river, like with my boss handing out shots on the bridge as you go past it. Like yeah. absolutely paralytic. Like there's some great moments, but I can't, it ruins you because I can't do holidays anymore because I can't sit and settle knowing that I'm only going to be there for two weeks or seven days or whatever. It's, it's a hard mentality. Like, and I don't go on enough holidays to uh, get used to it again. So, so do, you, do you have any, I mean, I think we're, one day we're going to have to do a podcast where we literally just go into these in detail or these different places, but do you have any, um, like, of all the places you went, is there anywhere like mm-hmm. stand out? Like you thought, oh yeah, that was the, the best place I, I visited. There's, there's three, yeah. like, to be a bit of a cheat here. Uh, Egypt mm-hmm. like was a terrifying experience like at times because we got put in curfew um, there was armed guards continuously um, there's some stories there of they do not like tourism in Sharm El Sheikh where I was and they'd have it's called the tourism police and <laughs> bear in mind I'm working for TUI this isn't a dodgy company yeah, so yeah. you have to go to a bombed out building that had been attacked by the Islamic State uh, and who are on the other side of the Sinai Desert. You go to this building, which is an official building, to get your work permit. You are not allowed to say that you work in tourism. It's illegal in Sharm El Sheikh to be a work in tourism if you are not Egyptian. Wow, Really? Yeah, so you can go in and say anything you want, but you cannot say tourist. So my work permit said I was an archaeologist. <laughs> like, like those two, just, those two major skills came back to yeah. Him. You don't answer any questions. You give the guys some money. You yeah. say you're an archaeologist. You tell them how long you're going to be there. Bear in mind, may I point out that there is thirty English, like young adults. Like all stood in a row going, um, I'm here for accountancy. I'm an archaeologist. Uh, I'm a chiropractor. Like, <laughs> that is brilliant. The bus that has got a TUI labeling on the side. Like, so they know what's going on. So it's yeah. a thing. But then that bit's fine. It's a bit weird. I went to go for a piss, and there's a guy that follows you, and he's got an AK 47 with Jesus. like gaffer tape around it, just watching you piss. Like, because they have to watch every room because mm. it's been blown up, basically. So it was terrifying. And, and it's like your first experience when you get there. But if you'd have radios, and if you got a radio, and for us, it was, they would come over and they'd just say red lorry, yellow lorry, would just come over on the radio, which is a stupid phrase to have because you can never understand it on a radio. Yeah, um, it's hard enough to say. That was being said, it meant the tourism police were checking the building, checking the hotels. Right, okay. So they were allowed to come in whenever they wanted. And you could be doing a session with kids you, and you've got two branding, you know, all the guests have wristbands on, you don't have a wristband. So you would have to like take off your top, dive into the pool. You would always have a wristband in your pocket that you'd have to slide on like, and just swim and make it look like it's part of the session. Brilliant. Like, so, like, but you've got all these kids and just one adult swimming around or you take it all of the children's rooms. Like if you're doing like indoor stuff were one way glass so they couldn't mm. see in but they could try and open the windows so there'd be like eight of you in there tutors all of these kids thinking they're playing a game and you're kind of holding the window shut so they can't yeah. look in because if they catch you you're arrested you're fined you're deported from the country and you can face imprisonment yeah that, that like, would scare the crap out of me honestly like doing yeah. anything like that there because they don't mess about no they don't and it was you, like in the hotel, we had enough times, but there was times when I wasn't near a swimming pool. The, the thing would come over and I'd just been near sun loungers and I'd be stripping off, laying on a sun lounger, hiding my bag. And there'd be someone's empty drink, like a table down. I'd just be grabbing that and just holding it in my hand. Like I was asleep on a sun lounger mm. as all these guards were coming past. And they all have like the, basically they're doing it because the hotel would then give them money. Mm. it was just a racket the hotel would pay them to go away and you'd especially yeah. see it 
like when it was getting closer to Ramadan, because obviously they're not going to be as intense during Ramadan because through the daylight hours, um, they'd ramp it up beforehand and they'd come maybe daily. Like, and it was, it was a lot. It was, it was, a, it, it was a wake up call as well. Cause I hadn't dealt with that sort of culture. I dealt with European culture. You know, it's very similar. Mm. Um, in Egypt, it was very, very different, but I loved Egypt. Like I loved, like I got in a Bedouin, like that's their taxis over there, shut the door and the door just fell off. <laughs> so the guy in front of me just held the door <laughs> as he was <laughs> flying down this road. Like I love that they just get on with it and, and yeah. they're so happy. Like, and it was, I didn't like the haggling. The haggling was hard for me. Mm. Like, and trying to get you in the stores all the time. But once they realize that you work there and you don't have wristbands, they kind of leave you alone. And you learn mm. a few sayings and they know just to kind of leave you be. But yeah, Egypt was one. Um, America, the few times I've done America, New York was always an incredible experience. Purely for just wow factor of somewhere being so big and so busy. Mm. Um, I'm not a huge fan of busy places, but that was always one. And then Cos uh, in Greece, um, purely because it's the first season I did and it was the last season I did and I bookended it. I was terrible in my first season and I was good in my last season and it's where I met Casey. But for me, that was a place where it's the place apart, like I've most felt like home. I thought I was going to live there. Um, I thought I was eventually just going to do my own, have my own company doing animation there and run, work in some hotels there. So I, I love Greek food and I love Greek drinks and Greek beaches. And so like, you feel like uh, you took that culture with you the most and yeah, made it your own. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. It's where I felt most at home. Like I absolutely loved it there. It's the, to put it this way, like it's the one place that I think about the most where I get any sort of pang of, yeah. I miss that place. Like, like I'm very happy with the choices that I made, but the, the and wouldn't change them for the world. But that's the one place where if I think about it for too long, I'm like, I really miss mm. just the lifestyle, the Greek lifestyle, and the mm. like. The uh, the people were always so nice there. So then you see, you see, you followed Casey to London. So how long, how long were you living in London? How did you find it there? Well, we lived in London and Thurrock, but I was still pretty much in London all the time. Uh, from 2016 to last October. Mm. So a decent chunk, like what, four years? Mm. Um, yeah, I, at first it was hard for me just to settle back into England. Mm. I was struggled. Like, because I'd go into a shop and not expect them to speak English, you know, and I'd be trying to work out what language I was going to have to speak. And then I'd realize it was English. And it took me a long time. This is such a weird, weird mental thing. I couldn't get on a bus. I couldn't get on a bus. I just, because I just hadn't done buses at all. Like, and I just didn't want to get on the London bus. I didn't really want to get on the tube. I didn't want to commute. Mm. like because i've lived in hotels and went straight to work from there i found it really hard to adapt to that side of things and mundane things like going to the supermarket mm. i hadn't done it in seven years you know like i hadn't had to think about what i was going to eat because i could eat in the restaurants and stuff like that and i'm not saying this in a way you feel sorry for me because it's a great life but you don't realize how much that messes you up mm. then come out of that and have to go into a real world because you live in a bubble like for seven up, yeah, years. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like coming out of a bubble. It's like yeah. being in prison, mm. but a luxury, luxury, very nice prison for seven <laughs> years, <laughs> yeah. and then trying to adapt to like normal life, like TV. Mm. I hated it, and I still do. I used to like TV before I went and worked abroad. Now mm. I can't stand it. I can't stand adverts. I can't stand watching stuff like that. I, I like stuff on demand and sleep just doesn't happen for me because I used to fall asleep abroad, like watching YouTube with my headphones in because mm. there's always noise. I do it now when, when, when I go finish here, like case if you're asleep anyway, 
um, I go put my headphones in and, and watch something and fall asleep that way. Obviously, that's going to change when I have a child. They're going to ruin everything. Oh, yeah, like, that's going to that's gonna change big time. So, yeah, so I'm enjoying the last bit of it I can. But, yeah, I found it really difficult. But I really loved London. Like I got into the swing of things once I got used to how people were and commuting and stuff like that and I had a group of friends uh yeah I started to really appreciate it and I was kind of sad to leave actually when we when we were leaving Perfleet because I one I loved that house uh, it was just because of COVID the landlord wanted to sell um mm. so we were kind of thought instead of renting again we'll buy somewhere we just because it wasn't planned we just couldn't afford London mm. so mm. we thought we'll move out into the a bit further away so P- well, Hampton near Peterborough and uh yeah it's been a bit of an experience out here because it's a bit middle of nowhere you know but uh not as not as middle of nowhere as you so uh yeah yeah but yeah compared to London it is it's weird um, actually like obviously uh, you know bar like some some things like you spending seven years in different countries there's a lot of yeah. like kind of similarities in like yeah Obviously, it wasn't in London, but I was as, as close as you can get in uh, Essex. Is basically Essex, London. and yeah, yeah, basically that. It, that's what everyone says here. But obviously, yeah. when you when you've grown up like in Essex, like London's London, you know what I mean? Like you think you just think, oh, London's just really busy, and mm. everywhere else is like here. But then you realize actually, no, it's like yeah, it's like it is very much just overspill. It's so busy in in Essex, just and consumes and, that whole area. That you know, yeah. Yeah. Same like red buses. It's all like, you know, it yeah. all looks like London. It's just not quite yeah. London. And you really notice it after stepping away from it. And then when you go back and you realize, God, it is so busy here. Like it's just, um, it's busier I, in uh, London, in the oh, city, but like it's still so busy here. But yeah, I know, you get, it, yeah, it's a bit of a culture shock when you do go back. You're like, oh, wow, th- this is what a lot of people look like. Not me complaining that Tesco's a bit busy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is a lot of people. Oh, okay. But yeah, I, I always laugh that because we got engaged really quickly. I didn't, and it was before I really knew anyone in London. Mm. And we were getting married. We got engaged in the August and we got married in the May. So is it, we didn't want to wait long. Um, so I didn't really have know anybody in London. So my stag do was my father-in-law, and my two brothers-in-laws. Mm. Like uh, we went to Romford. Like <laughs> we, we went to Romford. Dogs, yeah, <laughs> to <laughs> Romford. Dog. We, via, we went bowling first anyway because it was on the way. We got, we were drinking there. Then we went to a Toby Carvery. Yep. Had a Toby Carvery. <laughs> then had more drinks, and then went, went and just did the whole night at the run for dogs like and just uh we're doing shots and uh it was uh so wait this is this experience. is the day we need to give vince if he if he uh, actually comes over. that day and uh it, show, show him the real ex- english experience <laughs> but that was my first time ever going to the dogs or the horses i've never been to scampi and chips at, at the dogs maybe. yeah given that given the scampi uh, i'd love to see him try and eat scampi <laughs> like what is it what animal is this like, what is yeah. a scampi anyway what animal it, is a scampi? It's it's a fish, isn't it? But um, yeah, but what fish? Is it a prawn? Is it a shrimp? I I, is I, it a fish? I said that's a good point. That's it. I I just assumed it was like a bit like crab sticks, where what? it's probably just a bunch of everything just made into like a scampi. a fish popcorn. Uh, fuck off! What? Scampi is this, a pic- is a... this picture of this big scampi creature? Like, mm. <laughs> scampi. scampi is a lobster. Wow, it's an yeah. act. It, it's not it's an lobster. Ac- actual lobster, though, is it? Oh, way lobster. It's it's an edible lobster of the order Decapoda. It means ten pod, I guess. It is widespread in the Mediterranean, northeastern Atlantic. It is it is a lobster, and when you look at the picture, it looks like a lobster. So all this time, been eating, eating lobster, l- lobster, lobster, chicken nuggets, yeah. breaded lobster, deep fried lobster. Just wow. the English to ruin it. Uh, yeah. So that was my uh, that was my stag do. But yeah, I think yeah, there's a lot of similarities apart from the seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dodging yeah. hell. 
but uh yeah it was uh yeah I, I miss london like but i don't think i could live there now even no. just these few months away and now having a child i don't want to raise a child in london. yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's not the i mean I, I i love london as well i miss i miss the i never lived there but used to go there quite a lot and I'm, i love that buzz of it i know some people mm. don't like that but i just love the i love that you can get lost in a scene no yeah yeah it's yeah. it's 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 cool and um but at the same time i do like the you know like where we the are best now, of like both the, worlds yeah exactly you got that quiet um and i know you haven't had time to really experience because since like you said since you moved you've yeah. been pretty much during covid times haven't you so you haven't really had time to mm. explore um, no i've never i've not the only place i've been to in peterborough itself is the hospital the vet mm. and the train station so i haven't really had a chance to go mm. anywhere yet looking forward to obviously uh just seeing the place there's not really much to see but um yeah no i'm definitely looking forward to uh venturing into the the home the current hometown for a little bit yeah. but i do think once once this alien arrives that we're uh, probably gonna have to move yeah yeah because if you want to you couldn't have another one in this house anyway mm. so it's already Oh, it's gonna it be two. It's gonna be two well, minimum, guys. That's what she's saying. Like, she wanted free. I was like, "You want free? You're on your own." Uh, I, was like, I was like, "I'm not even free." I was like, two. I could maybe stretch two, but I was like, "Well, that's the wrong word, maybe." But uh, <laughs> like two, yeah, okay. Well, well, that could potentially be a deal. But yeah. ironically, we bought this house to start a family. And then as soon as she got pregnant, we're like, this house is too small to have a family. <laughs> when you go through the list of everything you need, yeah. it's like, this house is too you'll, you'll soon know. You'll office. soon know. Yeah. I'm dreading yeah. the amount of stuff that comes with a child because I'm a bit OCD in the sense of I like everything hidden away like that isn't mm -hmm. on show, if that makes sense. So yeah, I like I'm everything like to be nicely in a cupboard. I don't... I hate cleaning, but I love tidying. Mm -hmm. Like, I, hoovering does my head in. Like, but tidy the room and making it look nice. I like that. So yeah. a baby is just going to come along and go, I'm going to ruin that. I'm going to ruin that. I'm yeah. Ruin yeah. That. And then I'll, I'll have my dog going, I'm going to ruin that. I'm going to ruin that. And it's just... Yeah. I mean, we, we're going to have to do, because obviously we're going to have to wrap up now, but we're going to have to oh, do yeah. a um, an episode where, you know, just kind of dedicated and, you know, Vince will probably be bored at this point. I don't know, but uh, just hold, you know, one dedicated on, on the kid and just yeah. what you know what but what i tell you expect. what before we even even do that yeah. piece of advice and i'll give to anyone whatever you think that you need to buy yeah you you need less than half of it maybe a quarter of it because yeah. that stuff that yeah the stuff that you you panic about oh we've got to have this and it's got like you're going to use it like three times and then you're going to sell it on ebay uh so like either get it I know you don't want to do this when you, but get it either get it secondhand or borrow something yeah. because the amount of times that you're gonna gonna use it, um, it really is not worth it. Because yeah, you do that the first your first baby you've, you want all these things and it's got to be perfect and stuff. And then if you do have that second one, you'll obviously by that point you're just like ah, you know, <laughs> you just you don't, kinda, need this, no, don't need that. Get you know, a cage. You, yeah, that's it. <laughs> you just like it is very much yeah. You don't need those all those things. Like you think you'll need like. For instance, like you'll need like hundreds of like baby clothes and stuff, but then like in in a two months time they grow out of it, and you're like, oh, yeah. what do we do with this now? Like, and it's just, yeah, yeah it's it's just um, finding that balance. I yeah. think um, before we go, like on that, we, we've been lucky enough that a lot of Casey's friends and our family have uh, still got stuff like so, like a crib and stuff like That's that it. that we're not yeah. going to have to purchase. So yeah, um, and a, even a pram and stuff like that. So yeah. we're dodging some of the big bullets but um i am a sucker an absolute sucker for tech yeah like and i'm mean. already i'm already looking at the crib mattresses that tell you the heartbeat the temperature <laughs> when they move like their breathing patterns yeah all of yeah. this that i can see on on my ipad that i can have next to my bed i just go and it'll beep if anything is mm. wrong and i'm looking at this sort of stuff casey's being more practical but i'm like I'm having everything automated. Like I, yeah. I want it the, all. The the like, um, we had one, and this is like obviously going back to like 2014, which was pretty cool at the time. But the monitor, but the the camera one, 
absolute yeah. must absolute must yeah um obviously now I, I guess it's probably just standard now like um but um yeah so we technically so already have one because we have one for the dog when we're there you out go. Like, yeah. and it yeah. is literally just uh, just being able to be in bed and just like moving the camera and just Watch and hearing you know the sounds yeah. and stuff it's just uh so helpful because yeah but hey we'll, we'll talk about all this um i'll wait for that podcast when i just panic for the whole two hours <laughs> we're all looking right. forward to it but um yeah that that wraps up um i mean you pretty much know everything you need to know now but adam i'm sure there's many there's uh, nothing others. else our secrets we, we didn't still... even get onto my murders that i did in the in 2002 there's, like, there's always the... time for that there's always time yeah. for that you know um but yeah so that's right this wraps up uh this week's shifty crab podcast don't forget that we do a news break every friday you'll be able to catch that on uh, shifty crab at youtube and uh also this episode and every episode before you'll be able to catch on youtube and on audio podcast services anywhere you go to get your podcast goodness but um yeah that's gonna wrap up today's show um thank you as always adam for uh for joining us thank you very much and thank you for such a lovely evening like i feel like this is like a therapy session i didn't have yeah. to pay anyone for this you know this, I'm gonna this is your life tonight this yeah. is your life. we're closing the red book and <laughs> We that's are at the end of it, Jesus. That's a bit. That's a bit of a. <laughs> that's a bit bleak. It's a bit doomsday, isn't it? Boss, this is your life. <laughs> Just ends here. This is the last page. We didn't tell you this. Yeah. Someone's not going to sleep tonight. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, until then, stay shifty. There we go. And that's right.